Hello. Uh, all right, I didn't like that, but fuck it. Let's <laughs> start. Hey, I'm Lawrence Lochin. This is a uh, SUP podcast episode 131. God damn, that's a lot of episodes. And uh, I'm Lawrence. And uh, to my, on my, uh, whatever, Chris Cheney, what up? <laughs> What's up, buddy? All right. I like I like doing intros because I really have I don't give a fuck about the intros, but I'm gonna mess up the intros as much as I possibly can. Yeah, so dude. and then next to Chris we got my main man on the trigger, Luke Trevisi. What up? Hello. All right. This is good. Good. Good, man. We uh we had a it's been an interesting week, man. It's getting cold. Football's happening. Dudes are tearing their ACLs left and right as of when we record this podcast. Yeah. But we're we're not gonna start out with any of that. We're gonna start out with <laughs> fucking Kanye West, like you know, like it was it's supposed to be written. Mm-hmm. Uh, the dude is having Twitter meltdowns left and right. Um, I don't know, man. He's talking about getting getting his fucking publishing his masters or whatever. I mean, he's he, talking about a lot of shit. Um, I don't know where you guys want to start off uh, specifically, but my favorite comment uh, out of the, this this rant that he's going on is how he called Puma trash, and he's yes. going to unite Adidas and Puma again. Like that hasn't been the biggest sneaker rivalry in all of history between the the Puma brother and the Adidas brother. I do like the idea of trying to bring the brothers back together. What's funny is that like they don't it, <laughs> like they 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 could link up again because like although the businesses separated because of the friendly I mean the the family affair mm-hmm. they're not around anymore we they could join back forces they there's right. no there's no need to beef anymore right but you know one of them did the other one dirty it's true Do you know the whole history I really don't I'm not familiar with it I I I'm supposed to pick there's like a book on it that i wanted to read but i I never got a chance to i mean it's just like weird family shit they basically just stopped fucking with each other and the other guy was like you know what fuck you i'm gonna go make my own shit and then he made puma nice um yeah he's i mean he he's you know he's talking about he's tweeting about mentioning a lot of people's you know taylor swift jay-z drake he's just i mean wilding out per use man this guy is you know it's a lot of doesn't make sense, man. Um, this is the most justified rant he's had in a while. Yeah, I was gonna say this is the one I'm like more on than anything else. Like the the unification of artists together, not letting people make money off it. Like uh, we, we should own our own shit, which you know we do. We own this platform. This is ours. We don't share this with right. anyone else. It's between the three of us, and uh, we should try to keep it that way as much as possible. I mean, I get like if you're a young artist and you want to like you know you need the help of a major label, but then you should be able to work something out where you get your masters back. And I think that's basically the pace that he's going on him. Like uh, Joe Budden's always been trying to preach in this. And like, that's why he left that Spotify thing. And it, you know, everything is kind of moving in the right direction as far as artists, like uh, supporting each other, which I like. And that's one of my favorite part about this is Joe Budden yeah. broke down Megan, the stallions ridiculously garbage contract. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're, they're all, it's a problem. It's a real problem. The, f- the funniest part was uh, he, he, he had to double back on the Puma thing because he was like, yo, Puma's trash. They're making weird ass shit. Not, I don't think remembering in the moment that like Emery Jones and Jay are like our Puma right now. I know like Beyonce is with him and Adidas, but like the partnership with Jay, like they're supposed to be, he's trying to like rekindle that friendship. <laughs> you don't call your friend shit trash though. If you want to try to be friends with him again. Well, that's what I, that's what the first thing I got out of it. And I'm like, you know, this guy is talking shit about Puma, but it's like, that's, you know, Jay Z is, you know, is Puma right now. He's the guy who's trying to, you know, uh, reignite the brand. He's, yeah. You know, so it's kind of like, you know, I think Kanye just can't stay out of his own way. Uh, you know, he's talking a lot of stuff, you know, some interesting stuff. He's talking about how, like, you know, he, you know, Michael and Prince died, you know, Prince died trying to get his masters, you know, his, his publishing and shit like that. And, and, uh, and Kanye's like, you know, if they kill me, it's, it's a lot of deep stuff. Uh, you know, I always say, I mean, I know, you know, his, a lot of the, the, the way he delivers the message turns off a lot of people, but sometimes, you know, he does have some interesting things he says, but mm-hmm. it's just, it's just like, rah, 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 cats are crazy. Fucking dogs will shoot you. And then it's like, Music, musicians are slaves like it's like you got to find the right the right him. one that's like oh yeah he's making some sense you know i'm trying to find the tweet where he said i'm the head of adidas 
<laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I am the head of Adidas. Also, he put a Grammy in the toilet and pissed on it. I thought that was a little extra. But, uh-huh. I mean, yo, this guy, fucking wild. Like, I wish he had a translator. Because I think we all agree that Kanye is on a genius level. He's like another, he's on another plane with the amount of money, resources, and ideas this guy has, the will to make it all happen. He needs somebody to make everything his, his thoughts, like, digestible. <laughs> like how uh, Con- uh, Key and Peel had that anger translator for Obama. Yes, yes, exactly. Like that's, per- that's it, exactly. They, they, you want a Kanye. That's what you want? You want Kanye? <laughs> Yeah, so I am the head of Adidas. I will bring Adidas and Puma back together and bring me and Jay back together. All Pumas to sign are embarrassingly trash. Oh, fuck. But I will personally design Puma and Adidas to make everything okay. Uh, you know, once again, I just kind of take it as, you know, Kanye just, you know, machine gun tweeting and, he, you know, but at the same time, you know, some of the stuff he tweeted, you know, it, it made some sense. And, uh, but at the same time, it's like, how much, you know, we, what's his end goal here? That's my question. Like, what is he trying to, to do? You know? Unite artists, I guess. I mean, like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a better attempt. I'd rather him try to do this than run for president. Musicians union. That I'd rather him do as well. Yeah, this is definitely like some better shit. I mean, God damn, you're never supposed to trust anyone who tweets in all caps like this, though. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, and I, I, like I said, man, let's see what, you know, what, what kind of Yeezys he's got coming out. I think there's supposed to be some re-releases of, uh, of black Yeezys, uh, mm-hmm. 350s uh, for the right. holidays. I, you know, once again, I just look at it as Kanye, like, just, you know, continue to, you know, put out Yeezys and, and, and do stuff like that, man. I, this other shit is kind of, you know, It's funny. Like- no, it's funny, though, because, you know, he tweets his whole contract and, like, you, we learn a bunch of stuff from it. You learn how expensive he is. He always goes over budget, like, how much a guy like him makes. And, but then him to go, we got to stop doing all this shit. And then, like, to remember that he has his own label. So he probably, like, mm-hmm. gave these contracts to people that he has signed. You know what I mean? Really all over the place, though. I hope um, that he keeps this focus. Maybe ignore the presidential stuff. Uh, let the sneakers do themselves because you got the rest of the year kind of lined up. He tweeted like the whole right. release calendar for the rest of the year, which is cool. So yeah, just keep focusing on this, man. Just don't do too much other shit. There you go. Let, let's listen, man. Let's, let's, let's talk about what the people really want to hear, man. Mm-hmm. Fucking StockX, GOAT, Flight Club, Stadium Goods, sneakers, fucking shit like that. I ain't got time for mm-hmm. Kanye right now. Kanye is not my, my favorite person. But I do want to talk about this because this is kind of uh, big to me. Uh, uh, J- uh, StockX, uh, the co-founder, Josh Luber, he, uh, he left the company. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I, I'm going to say this. This is now this is some real shit. I, I feel like is, you know, StockX has provided a uh, it, it became a a buyer's market, per se. Mm-hmm. Like where, you know, I mean, dudes were getting shit for, you know, a little, little bit over retail for some certain things, you know, under, like it became like you can low ball and, um, but StockX is, you know, they're not perfect. They've had a lot of problems in the past. Yeah. And, you know, and I've, you know, I've dealt with some of their issues, uh, even especially during COVID where they're overworking their employees, employees are coming down with COVID, um, you know, taking weeks for sellers to get paid you know i had to you know it took me i think almost a month to get paid for shit i've sold um you know taking customers paying you know and then they taking months for them to get their stuff mm-hmm. um we've, we've had you know people always talk about stock x and fakes getting through and you know their authentication process being not the greatest um what does you think what do you think this means for stock x going forward if they're you know if their co-founder is that old. well uh i mean we've covered it in the past um this sector of uh the culture i don't hate that term but like this you know this area is getting a little more uh corporate and monetized uh you know we have StubHub in there there's ebay execs at StockX now um mm-hmm. so with josh leaving i think the authenticity of the company is going to be a little up in the air like i don't know where they're going to go i mean they're always going to shoot for the money but like it's just how they're going to do it mm-hmm um, but generally speaking, I mean, like, I don't think much is going to change as far as the trajectory of stock X. It's just maybe paying attention to where 
Josh goes because, you know, he's a startup guy. I mean, his track record in this, in this culture ha- has uh, definitely, like, moved it in certain areas. I mean, he was arguably the first guy to sort of, like, manage how much shit should cost um, mm-hmm. with his old shit. So maybe just try to follow him and see where he goes, see if it's uh, going in that, like, baseball card direction that we kind of talked about before that he spoke about um, mm-hmm. or uh, if he's going to try to do more with sneakers. But it's definitely seeing where he goes from here is definitely going to be a good watch. But, I mean, as far as with StockX is, I mean, we already know. They're just trying to grab yeah. our cash. I feel the same way. I feel like I, I think this means less innovation in the StockX platform. I think they've pretty much figured out. I think he's leaving at this time because he's, he's like, we've pretty much figured out the formula. There's really not much. Out, like it, it, the, the whole thing runs itself at this point, you know? Well, as he also as, said that he kind of like outgrew, like he doesn't, I mean, he said on different platforms, he doesn't like having like a large company. He likes startups. He likes having small groups. I get it. Like, you know, he wants to be on his Luffy shit. So I'm with that. But yeah. like, I wouldn't, um, yeah, it's just being, it's just watching what stock tries to do with our pockets. Yeah. Well, well that's what I was going to say. I and mean, a lot of times, and I'll say this, a lot of people, uh, you know, they, they, like you said, they, they work at startups. They, they blow up and then they cash out and then they get the fuck out and then like you said they go to another startup i see it all the time i've seen it all the time in my day you know corporate jobs you know i've seen it man people you know they they like you said the startups you know once they get popping these people are they become hot commodities so um i do think like i said i do feel like like, like they StockX. We, we discussed this in the past i think that they, they were they're good and then they're bad for the whole sneaker uh community because i think it makes reselling a little too easy but then it makes yeah. everyone want to say fuck it i'm a reseller now i'm gonna resell this i'm gonna resell that mm-hmm. because it's like oh yeah all i could do but then a lot of people you know you you think oh i can sell this on stock x and then you realize like after fees and all this other shit by the time you sell it you don't you haven't made anything and i think that's what you know it, it's it's good and it's bad for for people who want to be everyone wants to be a reseller everyone like right. we, you look at you look at that, and then we, you know, and then we look at something completely different, which is you know, Flight Club, which is always you know, it's been a brick and mortar. Who you know, who they, you know, they also had a a web shop, but they were a brick and mortar, and people would bring in sneakers, and yeah. you know, and and I mean, this is Flight Club is over fifteen years old, the store, and they've always had the the eighty twenty split in terms of sales. So, you know, for, for the listeners out there, if you've never, like, co-signed with Flight Club, you know, you bring in a pair of sneakers. If you say, hey, I'm selling these for $1,000, Flight Club's like, all right, well, for you to even put these shits in our store, we're getting $200 for the sale. Mm-hmm. And you get your $800. And I think Flight Club, and, and partially because of the fact that, like, places like StockX with their seller fees, you know, for, like I said, making it easier for people to sell, they now are kind of modifying so it's interesting how StockX has definitely changed the game but at the same time they're not perfect and then we that was the next thing i was going to talk about guys with flight club uh reducing their seller seller fees fees. yeah yeah i mean definitely a good move uh by flight club it it makes them see because i mean they've been a pioneer in this they were the first of their kind in new york here um it's good to see them like at least be considerate i think that's the best word to use in this situation like they're considering the seller in that because i mean we've we spoke about this off mic where the per, it's more the more personal ways to do it like instagram um you know like uh even like i'm sure nike talk has gone back to like linking up with people like yo i got this you want to meet up like how do you want to do this like more independent type shit so for them to go like all right we realize that this shit's kind of getting fucked up we'll reduce the fee so just so you guys can get it cracking again i i think it's a smart move by them yeah, yeah, I think you, you want to go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I think as far as like this move, though, this is this is I think this is in response to what happened in L.A. I think this is Flight Club trying to get the trust of the. Uh, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Of their of their uh, of their clientele back. Like this is like the best way because like we all knew they were going to take a hit somehow because there's no way you just lose a hundred thousand dollars worth of sneakers and just come out scot-free so this is probably where th- they probably figured if we're going to take a cut anywhere we'll take less on the seller fees and people can start selling their shoes with us again and maybe regain their faith that way 
Well, I also feel like, I mean, when you talk about like seller fees being reduced on Flight Club to what, 9.5%, yeah, you also realize that they're in business, you know, Gold purchased them. Yeah. So Gold's model is, you know, it's the 9.5 and then the 2.9, you know, the fee for, you know, the ACH uh, PayPal fee. So when you start looking at it, if, if Goat is doing this and they purchase Flight, then it's like, okay, they're in business together, but Flight is like, like how many people can genuinely, how many listeners, I want to know how many listeners have genuinely bought sneakers from Flight Club. And in the history of, you know, sneakers, have you guys ever purchased a pair of sneakers from Flight Club? Never. No. No. I purchased one pair of sneakers in my day from Flight Club. One. And, and I'm talking, I've been buying and fucking reselling sneakers for 20 plus years at this point in my life. And one, because A, because Flight Club, when you have a markup of 80-20, you have to realize that the, the, the prices of the sneakers are so insane. So if you look on, if you look at Flight Club now and you look at a pair of SBs, if say, for example, I'm just, you know, I just looked on, you know, Flight Club uh, the other day. I was like, they were selling a pair, someone was selling a pair of Civilis Dunks for $1,800. But then if you go on GOAT, that same pair, that is 1800 on flight club is 1300. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like a lot of times flight clubs clientele became, uh, it were either like rich people, celebrities, you know, people who didn't really, who said, you know, flight clubs, the only place I'm going to buy sneakers from, but with these apps, if you can just, you know, you could put in a bid on your phone, go to bed. And then someone accepts that the, the bid, you know, overnight, I think it becomes so much easier when you can, you say, oh man, you know, fuck it. You know, I'm just going to buy from, from goat. Yeah. Totally. I'm going to sell on goat. You know, when, when you have these brick and when you have flight club, flight, you have to, you know, you have to go to flight club. You have to you stand online at flight club. You know, this is pre COVID, but dude, you know, I've gone to flight club with, you know, six pairs of sneakers and I'm waiting for 40 minutes just to get seen because there's dudes in front of the, the fucking place with me for with with 40 pairs, you know, t- 20 pairs. Yeah. So I think this it's a, it's something that, you know, obviously has to change with the times. But it also goes to show you how how much StockX really kind of changed the game in terms of, you know, because they put the that's putting pressure on Flight Club to change their shit. Yeah, totally. And, the you know. It, Flight Club is also a weird exception too. Like so, Lawrence, you brought up, you know, they're 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 owned by Goat, which is also owned by Foot Locker, right? So there's a bunch of shit in there. It's weird to be next to a competitor because I don't think a lot of people um, that are generally outside of the like the general circle know that Goat and Flight Club are in the same bed. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah, they match. They they went to match it. I mean, at what point do you think they're just gonna like merge? What do you think it's gonna be like a Goat Club out here? Honestly, I don't think I it. I think Goat might overtake Flight Club. Uh, Juice was talking about it last week. There's a there's a goat store on Fifth Avenue. Yeah, we haven't nobody's checked it out yet, so I don't know if it's like a, just a drop off location for. I'm I'm sure it's a drop. It's just a drop yeah. off. But I'm like, sure. But like seeing a storefront with goat on it, you know, that I think that's pretty huge. I don't. I I I see. I think goat has much more widespread appeal now, and like you said, the prices are cheaper. So I just I see maybe goat taking over completely. Yeah, I think uh hold on. One I think that's what I saw with uh with uh with StockX cuz StockX had a storefront. They had a storefront in Soho. Mm-hmm. So you go drop your shit off, you know, you you say hey, you know, someone puts in a bid, you accept it. And then you say, "Yeah, hey, I'm just going to go to the StockX, drop it off, get paid the next day." So I think whereas, you know, I think with Flight Club when you see these stores and it's like, all right, I'm gonna drop these sneakers off on Sunday, and then I, you know, hope, and then hopefully someone buys them, you know, and then I gotta wait for you know a payment, you know, and now now this whole process then took me three weeks, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because it, someone, you know, depends on if someone wants to buy it on the website. So I think that's what um, I think that is what's making, you know, Flight Club have to reconsider now. Also, when you drop the seller fees. Let's see how much the prices come down. Because remember, those prices are high yeah. because of the 80-20 split. Right. Well, you know, 
you know, I go, I can go in a flight club and say, all right, I remember I was selling Yeezys. You know, we're talking, you're selling a pair of Yeezys for $1,500. And, you know, because A, you know, that was because they were getting 20% of that. So you have to mark it up. Uh, I, I wonder if this will bring down uh, the prices at Flight Club a little bit more. I think generally so. speaking that I think a lot of these fees and stuff are going to go down because, I mean, we, we, I think we've mentioned, we touched on it before, but like the personal shit going to Instagram and other shit, there's no fees on Instagram. There's no fees on eBay if you sell over a $100 sneaker, I think, if, if, uh, if I remember correctly. But the mm. fees are lower everywhere else. And personally, I could meet up with somebody get the cash handed to me and hand him the sneaker and it's all done. There's no middleman. You know what I mean? So I think to compete with that, especially in this time where like everyone's kind of sick of the bullshit of like, God, why are they having shit my shit yet? Like, where's my payment? Like, what the fuck is up with this shit? It's like, I'm sure, especially in New York, I could find a Facebook group where I'm like, Hey, yo, I got the union fours. Anybody want them? And you, they go, yeah. I'm like, all right, 500 for the guavas. And they're like, okay. And I just go, you know, with a mask on. Well, I think right. that, I mean, you know, obviously with, with face with meetups and Facebook Facebook groups and things like that, there's definitely some type of, I think that's a little, not everyone is really willing to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like some people- No, true, that's, a, no, that's a good point. So I think when you have like, when you have a, a, I think the StockX, the GOAT, you know, it becomes like, hey, I just dropped these shits off at UPS. There's no, there's no meet up with people. And then with Flight Club, it became like a, you know, you it's a, I gotta drop, I gotta stand in line, go to fucking, you know, fucking broadway or you know or wherever it was at in la and i think now i think this is gonna kind of because we're just seeing we're seeing a, a obviously a boom because everyone thinks like selling sneakers is cool and everyone thinks that like you know it's like trendy and shit like so we're seeing a boom in terms of prices like baseline prices of, of sneakers prices in general of a pair of sneakers that just continue to go up but i think at some point like like it has to kind of go down. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull up flight club stock X and goat for the fragment three. Cause that just came out on Thursday and I'm mad and uh, that I missed it. So I'm kind of like hate looking this up right now, <laughs> but I'm trying to see. So stock it's sent. Oh, let me just share my screen. Share mm. my screen. Lowest ask is four ninety four. Let's 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 do let's do pick one. A size. Pick a size. Pick a size. Pick yeah, a sure. Size. Uh, we'll just do a nine. All right. Six twenty-two. It says for nine. Lowest ask. Yep. Yeah, and then um, seven twenty plus on Flight Club. That, that's a size seven. Go to a size that's nine. A size. Yeah. Sorry. Hold on. Oh, a thousand plus. Thousand dollars. Ooh. Yeah. So we're talking good chunk of change that's a strong percentage higher uh, on flight club yeah here's the other thing though is that i don't know you've also got stadium goods which is another one where you've got that high like their prices are pretty high as well well you know? let's let's talk a little bit of, we'll talk about stadium goods in a second because i feel like uh i feel like they're uh a little different. Um, mm -hmm. Did you look at Did you look at gold to see what the prices were? I'm pulling it up now, but my internet trash, so I figured I'd uh, save the guys from watching load. No, 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 you're fine. Um, yeah. Feel great. Doing great. Oh, luckily it's and, the first thing right here. And I'll look up stadium goods while we're uh, while we're kind of doing that. Yeah. So by new on goat, it's five fifteen. All right, size nine. It doesn't really say a size here, but I mean that's a, still right. a good gauge. All right, so on, on stadium goods uh, for a size nine, uh, we're looking at uh, oh a nine was sorry uh, six thirty five. Okay, so it's about the same, a little bit higher than the stock X price. And for stadium goods, a nine is one thousand nineteen dollars. So when you look at stadium and flight, we're looking at over a thousand, and mm -hmm. when you look at stock and goat were what in the 600s basically right yeah generally speaking so it's it's obvious that these brick and mortar type of places are the ones to avoid in, in this current moment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the places that you know to be a place these app sort of atmospheres are uh i guess more towards the uh cheaper side even though paying 500 dollars or plus for a sneaker is not cheap 
No. Um, yeah, I think, you know, obviously, I, and, and that's what I'm saying. It's, it's kind of like who – I feel like, all right, I feel like two years ago, you know, people would say um, – you know, some people were like team flight club, you know, team – like I trust flight club. Remember, it, it was more of a, a trust thing. Mm-hmm with these with flight club people felt like comfortable you know maybe you know maybe three four years ago you yeah. felt comfortable saying all right i'm just gonna buy from flight club so but now you know in 2020 i think stadium good i mean flight club i mean goat and StockX have kind of they have a reputation now where people will go to them and i think with the allure of this the quick cash it's like all right i could just press accept and then get my money in two days <laughs> yeah it's, right. it's also like and now i'm thinking about it it was also like kind of click based too like earlier before like this came so accessible and mainstream mm-hmm. like you'd have like sk- similar to like what a skate shop is like you'd have like your squad like you you would know people i'm not gonna call them plugs because they're mm-hmm. you know they're selling you a overpriced it's over retail they're giving it to you for but mm-hmm. you had like affiliations with mm-hmm. these places it was more of a communal vibe but now because of like the the mass media going like, look at what's happening with sneakers and like SBs being marked up fucking five times what their retail price is supposed to be. It's like, right. you know, th- there's no alliance anymore. There's no allegiance. It's like, where can I get the best? Who will pay more? Right. Well, I've done, I mean, I've done that in the past, bro. I, I mean, listen, I'll say this and I'm not, you know, obviously I've, I've dropped stuff off at flight club because I knew I can make a lot more money off of it than I could if I sold on, on stock X. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and I and I've dropped and I've sold stuff on StockX because I wanted a quick flip, whereas I didn't want to put the shit and in, in, in have it sit in, in flight and say it all depends. You know, I think a lot of I think we also need to understand that. And I think, but I do think the the model of a flight club is becoming a little outdated. And I spe- and especially like you got like you said earlier, Luke, when you have a when you drop off your your items, and and then a, a store gets looted, and then there's a question of whether you're, you know, in the fine print, like we're not responsible for your goods. I think, like you said, that will cause some people to say, I'm good. Like, I'm, you telling me I'm going to drop off 20 pairs of sneakers and then y'all be on some, well, if we get looted, or if there's a fire, you're, you know, you're out of your money. Whereas, you know, when you can just, you know, drop some shit off, right. On stock, sell it on stock X. It's your, it's your stuff. Mm-hmm. So the only the only thing now you got to worry about is it getting there safely from UPS or from you know or, you know and and I think that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Chris, you did you you definitely brought up that you were a little upset about the uh, about missing out on. Oh, I'm the, so uh, mad! I am so room. fucking mad! I, yo, you have you guys have literally have no idea how mad I am. And the smoothest it's, brain move from Chris Cheney this week. It's, it's my fault. I woke up at 8.30 Thursday, and I was like, why do I feel like I have to do something later? Because I had the day off. <laughs> right. I, was, I was like, all right, I, got, I have nothing to do. I know I'm supposed to do something. Whatever. I, I'm going to roll over and kind of take another little nap here in the morning. Mm-hmm. I wake up 10.30. I check my phone. See, this is what I didn't check my phone when I woke up at 8.30. Uh, I just woke up and was like, ah, day off, kind of. All right, roll over. And then 10.30, I check my phone. I go, oh, no. <laughs> oh no i open the sneakers up i'm like oh no oh no yeah that's just gone yeah i'm gonna say this i've there's been some sneakers that i felt like have been must-haves and i've never oh like if i'm like oh i need these i'm gonna fucking be up to take my shot yeah you know, I know. a lot of times I'm, i miss my shot sometimes you know but i'm gonna fucking be up and I, chris i don't get how first off why are you sleeping until 10 30 on a weekday yeah Cause I can, motherfucker. What? <laughs> you wouldn't sleep till ten thirty if you had the opportunity. Nah, I don't know weekday, bro. I'm usually up, man. I'm up regardless of the situation around eight. He's got his oh. morning kombucha. Uh, I, you know, I have like I have a routine, but it's just like, like Luke, have you ever? Has there ever been a sneakers release that you fell asleep or you missed out on? Um, that you, for something that you really wanted. Yeah. Uh, no, never. Never. This is totally on me. I get it. Maybe I didn't want him enough. <laughs> I didn't. Maybe I didn't want him enough. Maybe it was. Uh, it's on me to realize that Chris. You know. Maybe you didn't really want these shoes enough, and that you shouldn't be so mad. But I am furious. I rem- I remember the the one sneaker. There was like maybe like one or two sneakers that I felt like were must this year. 
uh, the the uh, Ben and Jerry's I felt like were a must, and it was a Tuesday. Yeah. Morning and and I woke up at like six in the morning just to get myself ready. <laughs> I fucking got a bagel and I was like, all right, it's game time, bro. You are gonna fucking win this fucking raffle, this draw, and then I uh, I lost and then I just went to sleep after that. I was like, I'm going to sleep. I'm just going. I, I do it. remember getting that text after where you were like, shit is trash. I didn't get it. <laughs> I'm going back to bed. Yeah, but I mean, for for shoes, I truly want. Like yeah. I'm, I'm gonna fucking be up, and I'm gonna make sure, you know. So that's that's funny to me. I, I hear I, I hear that a lot from people. People say, "Oh man, I overslept this drop," and I'm like, "Yeah, nigga." Like I, I know there are a couple people in our Discord who've fallen asleep for some drops that you we were like, "I don't." How could you miss that one? Well, that's you what I'm guys, saying. you guys also know I am not a morning person. Out of mm. the three of us, I am the I am the late night. Uh, I that's like when I get my full creative, you know what I mean? Like I do most of my work at night, you know, I, comedy. I'm used to doing all my shit at night. So like, I, yeah, I really biffed it on that one, but I mean, that's funny, man. I, I laugh. I laugh when people like, especially like I said, when people really, they talk to you like, I want this shoe. I want this shoe. And then you're like, know. Oh man, I slept the sneakers release. Really. Oh. <laughs> when I saw that message, I was, I was double mad because I missed, like I missed on that. And I put in for your size. So oh, I was, really? <laughs> I'm the only one out here looking out for Chris. Chris not even looking out for Chris right now. Yeah, that's know. like, don't don't have me looking out for you and then you don't even look out for yourself. Bro. I know, it's <laughs> fucked up. Although, Lawrence, you know what I will say? I do like the idea of like on the days you're excited, you get up and you go to the coffee shop and they're, and they're like, oh, Lawrence must be trying to get a shoe today. Look at it. He's here early. He's in such a good <laughs> Man, mood. They're like, and the barista's like, hey, what are you trying to get today? And then Lawrence I, I, just goes on this long ass rant. I, go, I get a fucking bagel, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm excited, but... But no, I mean, like I said, I mean, the odds of getting a sneakers release, I mean, oh, it's God. it's getting to the point now where it's it's laughable, bro. It's really laughable about like, you know, like I just I've not like it's insanity. The cadence, the the frag the fragment cadence dropped at the same time and those sold out immediately as well, which blew my mind because everybody oh, thought dude. those were super trash. Nah, dude, it's it's got the name Fragment behind it. It's gonna it's gonna move. I was a little shocked they didn't do a draw for that uh, shoe. Me too. I was pretty surprised about no no draw. I wonder what goes into because uh, I think Nike knows. You know, they know what's hot and what people want. And I wonder why. You know, what signifies? Oh, this is gonna be a draw versus this is gonna be a a Leo release. Like I don't, you know, I don't know. I yeah, I would like to know how they do that. But you know what, we do give Nike specifically too much information because those polls that they're on the sneakers app. Oh yeah. 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 But I don't know. I, I, I encourage everybody not to use those because that's like, we're giving them free information. One of the questions based around this three was, are you more interested that it's a air Jordan three or a fragment collab? And me being oh. curious, see, this is where they also get you. Me being curious. I know I'll see the results if I tap one of them. Yeah. So I hit fragment because that was my favorite part about the shoe. I have threes. I'm not worried about having a three. I wanted a fragment three. So I hit fragment. The answer. And I, yeah. And at 63, at the least the time I remember, it was 63% of the tallies were for, yeah, I want it because it's a fragment. So mm. we're just giving this information with to know. Nike for no call. I don't free. know if that's, if that's free. And for, that was free information. That is dude, you should see some of the poll survey. shit they have on here. The poll questions are nuts. It's like, yeah, what do you a, like about this? And we say, I like this. And then they go, okay, put this in our database so we can work off this fucking. I yeah, they did, the, they did a debate for the, um, they did like a poll for like the, the unions, I believe. Where it's like, do you flip them up or do you keep them down? They did that too. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm sure, you know. I mean, bro, but even all these like micro questions, I, and this wasn't even a topic we meant to get on, but uh, all these micro questions are just leading them to manipulate us down the line later. It's true. There's one that's like uh, for the biohacks. It was how would you lace them? Sixty six percent said loose. Thirty four percent said tied up. Yeah, it's like we don't need to give them this information. They're only going to use this against us later. Yeah, man. You know, listen. I think it's I think it's interesting because no matter this is what I love about this is honestly what I love about singers. No matter how many times people say I'm never going to do this again. This is the worst hack. You know, let let there be something that you want. Your yeah, your ass right. would be fucking clicking right. submit payment. You know, on. Can you guys uh, read that? 
what draws you? Uh, yeah, so that was the Fragment 3. 38% said A. Jordan 3 and 62% Fragment Collab. I don't know. It, like I said, it, it's a nice shoe. Uh, it's nothing that would make me want to sell anything that I have to get them, if that makes sense. Like, you know, sometimes I get a sh- like I'll miss out on the shoe and I'm like, all right, I got to flip something that I own right. to get these. Yeah. And I, and, and I saw it and I was like, ah. You know, and I think maybe, you know, I think, and I'm, I'm not trying to be funny or anything, maybe because I have the, the ones and, and then I kind of see like the threes and I'm like, ah, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's like, at first it was like, oh man, I'd like to have both. Cause I like, you know, but at the end of the day, I think they're just so plain. It's going to be interesting to see w- the, where they hit in terms of the bottom, in terms of resale, like, you know, like where's the bottom for these? Are these, are these a $450 shoe? that you know that's there for a few weeks and then it just fucking booms or does it stay at like the 600 and then just continue to increase i somehow want to acquire these for 200 dollars. i don't know how i'm gonna do it i do i hit every plug i hit plugs that i haven't talked to in years bro uh, people that i like i don't even work at nike anymore i'm like damn wasn't it wasn't the way you said you see you want to acquire for two hundred dollars? I'm like, isn't isn't retail two fifty? Wasn't retail no retail's two hundred on these. Two hundred? Uh, yeah. Huh. The union was two fifty. Union's two fifty. All right, let's let's discuss the union a little bit. They pushed the release date back to October sixteenth. Yes. The yes. Sneakers release. It's gonna be a draw. Uh there's gonna be no guavas. Um I don't know. I, I, like I said, man, I think the Guavis are, are going to be one of those shoes that, you know, that kind of I'm going to look back on and be like, fuck, man. And, uh, it might be early to say, but just based on the entire rollout, that might be this year's sneaker. Is that four? I don't want to say uh, the Noir or the Guava, but mm-hmm. that might be this year's shoe. Is that your shoe, shoe of the year? It might be. Interesting. Nah, Interesting. Nah. I'm going to hold my tongue till the end of the year. But... I'm just kind of, you know what? And I'll just say this. We don't got to stay on it. But you look at uh, Ben and Jerry's. You look at uh, the Grateful Dead's. You look at all these other hype, hype shit that came out. The second they came out, there was a week of just like, oh, man. And then nothing. You didn't hear shit about these shoes since then. Right. But these are not. I mean, that's not really fair. These aren't really out yet. These, these have double releases because it's a union. But um, no, here, I, the rollout, which we've discussed before, where they had like the mystery, like, why is this guy holding a blue pair? You know what I mean? Like with the blue gloves. Why is the tongue like that? Then the reveal of the tongue can move up was just in like the crazy rollout. Crazy, crazy, crazy rollout. Okay, I'll give you that. Give the you hatred that. of it on first. We all pulled a 180. You know what I mean? Like, because I was hating on first. I have the, the guavas. I was like, I don't know about these. But right. I in me and a bunch of the community just turned around and was kind of like, I right, yeah, I'm kind of with that. I mean, even... uh. I'm trying to think of some other hype shit that came out. Uh, we're still talking about these, and I know it's due to the second release, but they're still a sought-after shoe. The resale, high, resale price is still pretty high. I don't I mean, know, bro. I, I, I mean, clothes, bro. Well, I mean, I, listen, I, you know, and we're in September, but I still think there's, like you said, there's Strange Loves, there's Ben & Jerry's, there's Civilist, there's Off-White 4s, there's Off-White 5s, there's, you know, I mean, obviously unions are up there, but it's too early for me to say union fours are sure the i don't think they're sure of the year i think they're up there i but, think they're uh, i mean i think I'll, this could be a contentious year because last, last year it was like the sakai that was like sakai travis scott so, so that was it those were the two like yeah, those travis scott the, ones and then it was sakai like oh man like those are two right two, you know and then what 20 what was that 2019 and 2018 i think union ones were probably mm-hmm. you know 2017 you know you off-white ones, Prestos, Marjards, but like right. I think this year, like honestly, like you can ask ten different people what's the shoe of the year, and I think you might get ten you different really, answers. You might get like yeah, anywhere from seven, ten different answers. You know, like yeah. we all know so, it's not going to be the two seventy though. Not that Cactus Trails two seventy. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we didn't last year. We did shoe of the summer, didn't we? We did, we did a shoe of the summer, and then we did a shoe of the year, right, later? No, I don't. 
I don't really yeah. remember, but either way, like the shoe of the summer is definitely an interesting conversation because that's when you got the Ben and Jerry, you got the uh, all these other hype dunks that came out this summer, but we didn't really have one. So how do you even judge that? A summer, I mean, yeah, because you, you nobody. What what are people wearing on their feet, right? Yeah, I see. Yeah. I see the Ben and Jerry's a lot on Instagram and 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 all, all the streetwear reddits and whatnot. I guess I think uh, I think Ben and Jerry's. I mean, I think their rollout was even a little bit better than than the unions. You know, the rollout in terms of getting people excited for a shoe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, no argument on that. They had also had a good rollout. Like that's that's good, definitely a competition for that. They had a great. I mean, they had a great rollout. Um, you know, like I said, the the off white. I think I think Union Fours were rolled out better than Off White any Off White release this year. The Fours were, you know, fives. Um, and I think this is uh, because this is quote unquote the year of the dunk. There's just too many. Like I said, you got motherfuckers with civilists microwaving sneakers. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I, like that is. That's crazy to me in itself. It's, yeah, it's so befuddling. Also, why would you not just walk outside? Like, rub it like it's a lamp, like you're Aladdin or something. You don't need a microwave <laughs> right for a sneaker, you fucking weirdo. Well, that's what I'm saying. And, and you know, and, and I'm going to be honest with you. And, and, I, and I, like I said, I've, I've acquired a few things this year, but I still, I do. And at least the stuff that I got, I think the Civilist is definitely, it's such a unique shoe. Um. I also, like I said, I strange loves. I think they're complete. Like, there's just gorgeous. you can, yeah. the gorgeous sneaker. Like, you know what I'm saying? So there's just so many different. Hold on, who got that touchdown? <laughs> who got that? <laughs> oh wait, is it the Patriots game? Yeah, Patriots game. Hold on. Who's winning? Uh, hold on. Fuck. Hold on. You... Guys, back to uh, being right. interrupted by sports <laughs> during the Hell podcast. Yeah. This is what you guys came here for. Oh, oh my God! Oh, no. what, what happened? What happened? What happened? Nah, Leje Matt Lejeski, the guy who came in the room earlier, he is probably going. Hold on, this is not good. <laughs> this is not good. This yeah, right is for any new listener down that's down with here. us right now that maybe wasn't here uh, last oh, year during my football God, season. Son of a bitch! All right, I'm. I don't. I don't want to talk no more. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's the score? Fourteen, fourteen. Okay. All right. Okay. What? What what quarter? Uh, second. Okay, all right. No, for the, for any new listener that's with us right now, uh, Lawrence has a gambling problem. Yes. <laughs> and so do my roommates, yes. and they gamble against each other every Sunday. I don't know why they do this to each other, but every Sunday my living room is full of derelicts that gamble against <laughs> Lawrence. <laughs> A bunch of what are you doing with your face, dog? You got to remember your camera in front of you. I don't give a fuck, man. I'm a... <laughs> All right, listen, man. I don't know. Right, I'm, let's I'm do done. some hypeless heat and get out of here. <laughs> yeah, let's do some hypeless heat, man. Um, oh, wait, wait. You want to talk about the Yamamoto shit real quick or not? Nah? Yeah. Um, I mean, that was, a, that was a collaboration I slept on. I, I wish I didn't. I liked a lot of, like, the pieces. Well, just I, I, my only comment is I can't believe they didn't do it sooner. Uh, for those who don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about the Yamamoto Supreme Drop that came Thursday. Yamamoto, Yo, I think, is mostly known in this realm for his Y3 collaboration with uh, Adidas. Mm -hmm. He's Y3, the overpriced part of Adidas. Yes. Um, so, I mean, yeah, this was a long time coming. I just can't believe it only happened now. And uh, I'm really not mad at it. It's good, good shit. Simple yeah. pieces. That's it. Yeah, they all look pretty nice. I wanted that parka. But, you know, you know how it goes. Am I going to be the Parker guy now? Like, that's like one of those pieces where, where I'm like, yeah, I got to question my, 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 my choices. It's oh, yeah. We, we haven't really talked about the, when we bought something yeah. that wasn't within yeah. our, like, yeah. wardrobe. And then, and then we had, we to, had like, to, like, change our whole wardrobe based on what we bought. Huh. That's a conversation for another time, though. Yeah, for um, another time. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's do Hypeless Heat and get out of here um, so Lawrence can go cry in a corner. I assume you lost a bunch of money just now. I didn't lose a, I didn't lose a bunch of money. I'm just – I'm not happy right now. I'm just – I'm sorry. <laughs> he's, he's we got to start, we, we start doing this podcast on Saturday fucking morning. All right, let's uh... – <laughs> um, Yeah, Hypeless Heat. Uh, Luke, what did you tell me it was? We'll start with yours. Uh, I chose a, 327, a New Balance 327. Oh, that's it's right. It's just a – classic kind of uh just a classic running shoe 
from New Balance with the what's the one with the big N on it? Yeah, hold up. I'm I'm coming you up here. It? You know what? We didn't really talk about it, but uh New Balance 992s kind of have a moment going for them right now. I was going to say I was going to try to pick a pair of 992s because 992s have kind of grown on me over the years. But uh these guys, I mean, if you want a pair of like I like waffle sole shoes a lot. I I missed out on the Sakai's. These I find would be a suitable replacement as far as colorways go that I could just be like, look, I, I, I tried, you know? Yeah. I mean, I with these. as far as like the, cause the, the, you know, the norm core dad shit had a moment and it kind of left. Um, but yeah. you know, like the presence is still there left behind. These were a great adjustment that new balance made, uh, changing the end to this huge end. Yes. I think that was a very good way t- for, uh, the dad to flex. Does that yes. make sense? I hate the terminology we have to use, but like the small end was like super dad shit, super like uh, Steve Jobs. This big yeah. end shit is kind of like, oh yeah, I could, yeah, uh, this is my little flex right here. You see my, see my big end? See my big end? See my big end? You know? End. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll go with mine next. Uh, yeah. So after last week, we had Juice Foster on and he picked a DC and I miss skate shoes now. Like after wh- him showing us that dc i was like damn i used to this not this one specifically i think it was called the nyla but i remember i liked the kai a lot so i went i went and checked out the kai's catalog and this proto shoe and this wheat colorway specifically is fucking flames i like this a lot yeah Simple, like the tobaccos that's pretty cool yeah and then i mean even some of these other ones like these crazier colorways aren't that bad uh if this shit will fucking load i mean it's just a clean show though you can get it crazy you can get it clean or you can get it all over the place mm-hmm. you know all right, Al, what do you got, buddy? Black Air Force Ones, because you're going to fucking rob people in them. And- <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I think everyone knows what those are. I don't think I need to put an image of those up right now. You don't need to put up an image. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he gets robbed by my roommates, and then he goes, all right, you know what? My hypeless heat is this Black Air Force Ones. <laughs> My hypeless heat this week is Black Air Force Ones for a totally different reason. <laughs> oh, that shit is fucking funny, dog. Um, all right, hold on. Uh, any final thoughts while I pull up uh, the shit here to plug? Fuck your roommate, Matt and... <laughs> Yeah. Fuck your roommate. Uh, uh, Lawrence, you should, you should hit up that gambling hotline. <laughs> uh, uh, that wow. shit is so funny. All right, I want to um, quickly plug. Uh, we have a phone number. Um, some of you guys do text or leave voicemails to this phone number, but you try to troll us and forget that. I can just hit delete. So, But if you guys want to uh, – dude, some of the shit they say in this thing is ridiculous. But if you yeah. want to hit us, um, if, it's, if it's a viable question or if it's, a, what, if it's something that we can actually plan the podcast, we will. You can text it or you can leave a voicemail at 1-908-299-6910. Nice. Pick that phone number because there was a 69 in it. You know? I know. That's why you did that. Giggity. Um, so you could also follow us at Sub Podcast NYC. Uh, we have an email. You can also email uh, Sub Podcast NYC at gmail.com. I mean, I am at notthatchini.com. We have Trovisus. We have LZD325. And I guess the main direction we want to point most of our listeners to is the Discord. That is our main hub where we all kick it, hang out. Um, and if you're new to Discord, if you don't really stand it, like, come on in. Just download it, t- hit the invite, and we'll help you figure the rest out. We'll definitely make sure that you know what's going on in there. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Shout out to Ray, who emailed us last week. We just sent him back an email. Uh, thanks, thanks for sending out an email. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Our guy, Ray. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I guess that's it. All right, Lawrence, you can go cry in a corner. I'm going to go see, hopefully, Cam Newton get some rushing touchdowns here, and then that's it. Yep. All right. All right, peace, guys. We'll see you next week. How's it going? Peace.